for styrofoam unicorn horns at Walmart. And today we're gonna make miniature topiary spiral trees. To stabilize the topiary tree, I'm using a wooden stick and a cap from a conditioner bottle or maybe a shampoo bottle for the base. Now I'm tracing and cutting out floral foam to add weight to the base. cutting the floral foam in half so that it fits inside the cap that I chose. Now I'm going to take the wooden stick and poke it through the bottom center of tree number one. With black paint, I am disguising the green floral foam. I'm using different shades of green to make the tree look like it has texture, starting with the darkest shade first. Once the tree is fully covered in the darkest green, I then go over the superficial parts of the swirl with the lightest green. Once this dries, I then take the wooden stick and cut it to the length of the cap. With a piercing tool, I poke a hole in the pot, that way the stick goes in smoothly. It's pretty sturdy and it stands evenly. I like the color of this tree, however, I'm not completely satisfied with the texture. With that being said, tree number two is going to be covered with leftover crushed floral foam. First, I place it into a plastic bag and then crush it with either a mallet or a hammer. For some chemically reactive reason, it would not crush, so I'm going to try a different texture, sand. I cover the tree with glue and then roll it around in the sand until it's evenly coated. Since the stick is in the way, I sprinkle the sand on the bottom. You'll know that the coating is done once it resembles a churro. I use the piercing tool to indent the swirl lines. Once the coating is fully dry, I cover it with dark green paint with a sponge brush to protect the texture. For contrast, I'm painting over the superficial parts of the tree with a lighter green. While the tree was still wet, I took it outside and sprayed it with Mod Podge to seal the texture. After sticking it into the pot, it also stands evenly. So far, this tree is my favorite. For the last tree, I am using dark green burlap ribbon. This tree requires four 10 inch and one 14 inch pieces of burlap ribbon. I fold the ribbon in half, then glue it at the bottom and then wrap it around the track of the swirl. I keep the seam facing downward and repeat the same pattern for each strip. I'm using the longest 14 inch strip to wrap around the bottom of the tree. Instead of using a stick for this tree, I'm using juice bottle caps for the stand. I've glued on a jute cord bow as well as three caps to make this tree taller. I left a short video link in the description for how to make a jute cord bow. These trees can be used for both outdoors and indoors, so let's test it out. While trying to find a place for tree number one, it was a little too crowded on the right, so I had to move some things around. I've now found the perfect place for the tree, right in front of the window, and there's just enough space to get to the mailbox. Out of all the trees, my favorite for outdoors is the sanded one because it looks more realistic and durable for outdoors. For indoors, I started with the burlap ribbon tree first just because it seems like it is more appropriate for this setting. Out of all these different trees, I think that the burlap ribbon one looks the best for indoors and this doll agrees with me. Making these three trees was a little time consuming, but overall I had a lot of fun and I'm pretty impressed with the look. I'd love to keep making crafts with you, so please subscribe, like, comment, and share our videos. Also, look out for our new full episodes and shorts. We look forward to seeing you again and thanks for watching.